Hello everyone, my name is Raphael Forrest and I'm here today at SPNN. So, me and Mahad, we did a vlog video and today we are supposed to present our videos. So with that being said, let's get into the video! Um, I've been working at SparkY since 2015. I started out actually through the capstone course at U of M. Then I did the uh, summer internship. I was employed full time by 2016. And that's kind of how I got started here. My name's Kelly. Uh, I've been working here as an official staff member for about 10 months, but um, I started in the Roosevelt High School pilot program um, that SparkY was instituting back in 2016, I believe. My name is Zach. I am actually here through uh, an AmeriCorps service, so I actually served for MN Green Corps and was placed here. I actually asked to be placed here. Uh, and I have been here for roughly a little bit under a year, about 10 months now. And I'm Sydney, and I've only been here like a few weeks. <laughs> Urban farming is really farming in the cities, right? So there's not a lot of land, there's not a ton of space to actually do farming in the cities. So rather than um, trying to find a farm field, we do urban agriculture inside. So this space is uh, in a basically an old re, uh, repurposed office building. Um, and we can bring in lights, we can bring in the water, we can bring in the um, media, and we can kind of simulate nature right here in this space. Urban agriculture is different than conventional farming because it oftentimes it utilizes vertical space um, as opposed to horizontal space. So on a regular farm it's sort of you get these sprawling fields. In an urban setting you don't really have that ability. I mean sure you can get a couple of community gardens and stuff like that, but most of the time uh, urban farmers try to do something like what we've done where they've got vertical space um, to grow instead of horizontal, as well as a couple different sort of new new methods of growing, like the aquaponics. The big thing that we do, or like I like to say, again, uh, I'm very passionate about worms, so a big thing that we do here is produce food waste, which is very eco-friendly. So we're taking what otherwise would have gone to a landfill and been detrimental to the earth by producing gases that are toxic, uh, and we actually turn that into a resource. So all of the waste that we have, we actually repurpose, turn into worm casting, something that we can use to grow more food and use it that way. So that's a very big eco-friendly thing that we do here. One of the many. That we are educating people. So honestly, like, if you ask someone what sustainability means or what, um, you know, environmental friendliness is, a lot of the time they're not quite sure what to say or what the right answer is. And I like that we can kind of teach people in this, uh, this kind of cool environment, what that is and, and how to interact with their environment in a more sustainable way. Coming into work, because it's just, it's a, it's a fun work environment to be in, and I like that everybody here is uh, really interested in sort of learning and figuring out, so though we are teaching other people, we're also trying to learn as much as we can about all of these different areas. That uh, we can bring it into an urban setting, like where students otherwise uh, in these urban settings would have never seen a farm before maybe uh, or have never grown their own food or even seen what their food looks like before it's given to them like to eat and to like show students that in this urban setting they otherwise would have never like had the chance to see it before. I think that's amazing and awesome and a really cool thing. The whole reason I'm here is to have hands-on experience because I'm going to be studying uh, horticulture at the, U the University of Minnesota. Um, so I'm just here to learn as much as I can and soak in all of the knowledge. <laughs> I'm Courtney Cheetah. I'm the farm manager here at Cornucopia. Leah Mowry. I'm a intern here at the Cornucopia. I'm Beth Jones. I'm the executive chef at the Campus Club at the U, and I am a buyer from Cornucopia. Means that we're not using any um, synthetic pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, or fertilizers. That's probably the, the biggest thing, but it actually means that we're, uh, because we're certified organic, it means that we're following a specific uh, list of rules that's put out by the government that says what you have to do to be certified organic, and so we have to follow all of those rules. On a conventional farm, they can use whatever they want. They can use uh, non-natural uh, occurring um, 
pesticides and the synthetic essentially things that are man-made. They can use fertilizers and pesticides that are synthetic as opposed to naturally occurring ones that we're limited to. We raise chickens, so those are the only animals on the farm, and we get them when they're chicks in the mail and then we um, have them inside while they're growing up and once they get their adult feathers we bring them outside and we have 10 coops with about 30 chickens in each coop and they are on a field of clover and each day we move them and they eat the clover and then we feed them um, chicken feed and we change out their waters every day and we move them so basically they're cage free chickens because they're not within the tiny little cages like normal um, industrialized commercial chickens are in and they can move about within the cage but then the cages um, are there to protect the chickens from predators like foxes or coyotes or hawks that will be around here that could eat them um, and then once they get to an adult stage, then we sell them off to people and then they go to the freezer and then they're eaten. Tomatoes. Um, they, they have 95 varieties of tomatoes and Courtney and I have joked for 11 years that I am her tomato enabler. Mm -hmm. um, yep. We're both kind of addicted to them. Just all these funky, beautiful, flavorful heirloom tomatoes are really a lot of fun. That's, that's my favorite thing that comes off of here, but the chickens have been amazing. Um, you know, the, the fruit, you know, a lot of times people don't think of Minnesota as a state that can raise peaches or cherries, but they're doing it here. Um, you know, those are, those are two of my favorites, but there's just, there's so many things, you know, Courtney shows up at, in my kitchen and, you know, once in a while she'll be like, I got a surprise for you. And it's, it's just fun. You know, we, we cook, we we have a set menu, but most of our menu is made up the day we cook it. We don't have a lot of recipes because I'm waiting to see what amazing stuff they're going to grow. And once it gets to us, then we figure out what we're going to do with it. My favorite thing is being outside. I get to be outside whenever the weather is nice <laughs> and if the weather is really bad then I can go inside if I need to but I get to be outside and I get to teach people about food and where it comes from I get to teach college students how to grow all these amazing crops um, and I get to feed people and that that's a pretty like it gives me goosebumps when I think about it because it's like feeding people is so important everybody eats three times a day usually and and being able to provide that sustenance people in an eco-friendly way in the soil and building soil and we're protecting pollinators and we're you know utilizing those pollinators in a in a way that we provide them with lots of flowers to visit is really really important to me labor um, it's really nice and I feel like a lot of people um, in college internships or things like that they don't they sit behind a desk for 40 hours a week and they don't really ever move and I mean I hit my steps on my Fitbit every day and things like that like I'm always moving I'm can even tell now lifting things that I lifted at the beginning of the season are easier to lift and things like that so it's really nice just like being in the dirt and being dirty and being out in the sun um, but I also really love just being a part of an organic system because we're not only creating food but we're creating food that's food that's good for you and good for the environment so like we were talking about earlier um, the bugs where they have like mutual there's a benefit from allowing these bugs to happen. If we used all these harsh chemical pesticides, then they wouldn't be there and we would be destroying huge ecosystems of bugs just for our own benefit. And I just really like that we're kind of just like mindfully growing these things and growing things for humans, but also enabling the ecosystem to still operate as it should in an agricultural field. You know, this farm is really one of the best parts of my job at the campus club. Um, you know, Courtney and Cornucopia started out with a quarter acre of land and now they've got five acres of just massive crops and they've done so much research. And so the fact that I've been able to buy from Cornucopia for what, 11, 11 years, years now yeah. has been one of the, really one of the best parts of my job at the club. And they provide us with such beautiful food. It's, you know, I, I think, I, I, I was reading a book recently that, you know, one of the largest parts of being a chef, a chef is shopping. And who you get your food from has a huge impact on what kind of restaurant you are, you know, and to be able to support what Cornucopia is doing is just really gratifying. And plus, 
our plates are 10 times more beautiful and flavorful and healthy because of this farm. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you all enjoy our video and make sure you go to the SPNN website to learn more about this summer camp. Have a great one.